Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Integrity in Matters by Turnings. And today is going to be part one of a book series on reimagining university assessments in a digital world. With me in the house today is Professor Margaret Berman of Deakin University. Um, hi, Margaret. Can you give us a little bit about your background, what you do at um, Deakin, and especially the, the special projects with the Cradle team? Sure. Thanks for having me back. And um, so I research assessment feedback and digital learning in higher education. Um, I'm particularly interested in assessment design, feedback and clinical environments, actually, and I'm really quite interested in healthcare and what goes on in healthcare environments. And also, possibly most relevant today, what might be called learning um, in and through a digital world. Not so much the digital as innovation, but how we think about the digital as being incorporated into student and teachers' everyday lives. You know, the smartphones that we hold, the video calls and conferences we have to make, those kinds of things. Um, and I have a dual role at Deakin, so I spend some of my time researching those things, and I spend some of my time still those things sometimes, researching things that are of strategic interest to Deakin's learning and teaching agenda. Um, and at the moment, I'm doing a piece of work around sustainable innovation, just to give some idea of the flavour of that. Great. Right. You've, got, you've got a huge hat. I'm sure you are. you've got a lot of hats to fill in. So I can't Stretch really speed. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you for being with us today. Um, today, we're exploring digitally mediated assessments. Uh, we're going to be looking at a little bit about the, the social and ethical um, impacts um, with regards to this. So I think the very first um, crucial question is, what are digitally mediated assessments? Well, you know, um, there's a lot of contention around the, the words computer-assisted, computer-aided, um, computer-based, and for people who've been around ed tech for a long time, there's been a plethora of terms. We've settled on digitally mediated it's the really broadest notion of the employment of digital technology that you can possibly think of. And in fact, almost all assessment is digitally mediated nowadays. I mean, I can't think of a single person that doesn't upload their results, for example, into Callista using, well, Callista um, or some other form of, of grade, techno um, you know, grade entering technology. Um, so, um, and I think this takes away a little bit from the, uh, the sort of notion that technology is always a point of learning innovation. It can also sometimes be about efficiency or sharing results or those kinds of things, as well as, you know, making a better assessment task as well. So basically, if you use a computer or a digital technology to do your assessment, it is digitally mediated. Yeah, you right. said it so simply. I took, I took, you know, three sentences to say that. Thank <laughs> you. Twice as long. Three times. Yeah, perfect. So with the use of digitally mediated um, assessment or as we move, it, I, I believe we're already in that state where we're uh, most ac academics and educators are using or uh, doing something digitally. There comes the social impacts. There's yeah. the moral responsibilities and there's all the ethical considerations, which you talk about in your, in your book. So um, what are these, including the, um, the ethical dilemmas presented by digitally mediated assessment? Well, I think what's really interesting is, well, it's interesting for me, but I'm an assessment researcher, is that I think assessment is a really significant and powerful part of what the university offers. Assessment is when the university says, you know, you're in, you're out, this is what the standard is, this is what the standard might not be. Um, and so we, it, it contains in and of itself a lot of moral weight. I mean, um, I can't remember who said, I think it was Peter, um, Peter Knight who said, you know, assessment is a moral enterprise. It's where the university says what is good, what it values. So we've already got, just by introducing the term assessment, we've got something going on there. And then we layer it with technology. Now technology clearly has huge social impacts. I mean, for those of us who can remember before the internet existed, we can see how that has transformed the world. and. Again, there's a lot more, probably a lot more work into the ethical and social and ethical repercussions of technology use and the associated moral weight. I mean, it's it's pretty clear from, 
you know, you look at hacking, you look at anything like that. There's this all sorts of ethical and moral dilemmas. So you put together this, these ideas, assessment, which is inherently moral and technology, which also comes with all this stuff. You bring it together and you bring a lot of, I think you bring together kind of minefield of dilemmas. And in the chapter, we really talk about three sorts of particular dilemmas. The first one concerns agency. So who gets to choose in a digitally mediated assessment? I mean, it could be about choosing how I do my digitally mediated task. It could be choosing what happens to my data. That's a sort of typical kind of social ethical dilemma that we're used to. Um, the second one that we we suggest is important to think about is diversity. So there's this, this whole um, conversation that is sort of implied that technology in and of itself makes people have more access. It broadens access. It allows people who wouldn't otherwise be able to reach higher education to come to higher education. But when you actually unpack that a little bit, there's very little evidence behind that. And sure, there's a lot of stuff, I think, around things like, you know, voice to text that mm -hmm. clearly is enabling certain forms of access. But I think that it's fair to say that there are other forms of access that we aren't paying attention to or we might not be thinking about. And I think there's some idea that um, that the claim that access, that, that technology in and of itself improves diversity actually starts excluding people, you know, the whole digital divide argument. And the final thing that we suggest in this sort of ethical, moral dilemma piece is around labour. So assessment, when students do assessments, they do labour, they produce something. It might just be data. It might be more than data. It might be, you know, an essay. It might be text. It might be alterations to a Wikipedia page. They might do something that becomes an e-portfolio that goes out into the world. And before, when you hand wrote something on a piece of paper and you handed it in, you handed it back, it was pretty clear who owned it. You owned it. You took it away. Now, other people have rights to that labour that clearly once just belonged to the student. And this creates all sorts of um, ethical dilemmas. And, 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 and yeah, um, it, we clearly have to balance different benefits. Well, so that's um, we're looking at labour, diversity, and agency there. Uh, Moving forward, you uh, the the book also talks about propositions uh, in terms of um, how to deal with this dilemma and part of embedding digitally mediated assessments in learning and teaching. What can you walk us through these three propositions for digitally mediated assessment? Sure. So the first proposition is really that educators and students need to build the necessary skills and literacies. Um, within technology mediated assessment. And this comes to the fact that a lot of the time there's this idea that because students are techno savvy, they'll be able to do the assessment without any support. And I don't think that's true. I think that's pretty well recognized. Where I think this proposition is more interesting is around the word literacy. Now, literacy is often taken to mean the basic skills you need to do something, but I don't know if any uh, you, of you are, I don't know if you've read Prera, you know, the, the great revolutionary um, educational theorist, and he talked about literacy, and he was talking about, you know, South America and building that kind of literacy. He talked about it as reading the world, not reading the word. So you needed to read, literacy was about your ability to read the society not just the pieces of the words on the on the page. And I think this is the most important thing around agency. Technology-mediated assessment is a socio-technical proposition. It's not just a skill. It's not just something you master. It contains a whole host of ethical and moral minefields that we've just discussed about and just discussed. And, and it's useful for students and educators to more deeply understand that layer of of how they fit into the world. Yeah, I think you raise a really good point with regards to the assumptions that if students are techno savvy, they can they can work it out. And uh, I think that's one of the things I faced while I was studying as well. It was just assumed that oh, well, because you can turn on a computer, you know where to how to upload them, you know what to do in terms of writing your um your assessment. 
Um, in terms of the agency, the book, um, one of the things that actually caught my attention was the idea that um, agency, um, it suggested that agency is not just um, a student's um, um, initiative or it should be part of the educators as well. And it doesn't necessarily say that um, this is good practice. Um, can you elaborate on this? I'd like you to explore that uh, or share a little bit more about um, why this is important to think of. Well, I think we don't think about agency enough and agency is a really not a, um, unbounded agency is not really a desirable thing in education. I mean, it's sort of, it's like child rearing as well too. You can't just give your kid everything they want all the time. That just, just does not go well. Um, and with students as well too, we want them to, we want them to learn a curriculum. We want, we, we you know, part of our job in here is to say, um, what is it that, that 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 we want you to learn. So this is just me coming to the the idea that you know I'm I, I'm not after free agency, but there are we need to also have from a moral perspective, from an ethical perspective, we need to have the ability to choose and know what we're choosing. And this is why I think in digitally mediated assessment, it's so important that educators have some agency, because so often what what technology does is it does many things. It often makes things very efficient. It is, in my view, you know, if, at the end of the day, it, 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 it's based on a series of categorizations. You can do this and you can do that. And, and those categorizations become, categorizations become increasingly sophisticated with AI because we don't even see them there. But in the end, you're fitting a pattern, you're fitting some other form. So technology always, in a way, removes some choice. And it's really useful for educators to understand deeply how, what choices the technology is, is affording. Because a lot of the time they don't think that. They just go into the LMS and go, oh, there's a quiz. I could do a quiz. And they don't stop to think that they've been, the, the very act of saying, oh, there's a quiz on the LMS has meant they're not going to think about a whole other host of ways of doing things. Mm -hmm. So. Um, this is why um, agency and critical literacies are so important. And I think also there's a modeling thing. I think if educators talk about their digitally mediated assessments and the issues of data and stuff inside them to their students in a kind of questioning, um, uh, open kind of way, then students will be able to start to access that conversation for themselves as well too. Yeah, I think you sort of alluded to my next question with regards to informed choices in the agency, but I'll, I'll let you expound on that as well. <laughs> in terms of um, informed choices and agency for both educators and, and uh, students, what is required? Well, I've spoken a bit about literacy, and but just around assessment, I think that the thing is, is that um, it's important for everyone to take a step back, I think. And I mean, this is, I feel this is a bit utopian. But nonetheless, it's important for everyone to take a step back and try to see other people's perspectives on that situation. So for a lot, a lot of the time, the student just comes in and they go, right, there's a quiz. I want to do really well because I want to pass this course and et cetera. And they don't think about what lies underneath that. The educator just goes in and goes, oh, there's a quiz. Let me just give that to the students. But um, when we, when I, I think we talk about digital literacies at a deeper sense, we start to also think about the rationales that people have will have for using the technology and start to um, understand how, you know, what is being afforded and what is being constrained. When a student does a quiz, a lot of the time students really like quizzes, they're straightforward, they tick boxes, but they also are losing something sometimes in the process of doing quizzes. So to start to raise that literacy, not just about the digital, but about that intersection between the digital and assessment. Now they're students, they're going to want to get the best mark possible. That's what I did when I was a student. I, I understand that. But I think our job is to um, set up assessment systems as best we can. So these things are learnt in the process. And as you point out, not just making the assumption that the skills are there, that the understanding is there. Just to stretch, do a stretch on that question there. Um, what are some considerations with regard regarding skills and literacies that promote agency with um, respect to digitally mediated assessment? 
I think part of the problem and part of the complexity here, it's a general teacher's complexity, is that we make the assumption that students are all the same and they're not. They're going to be really, really high achieving students. There'll be students who may be high achieving but have low digital literacies and all sorts of combinations of those. So we need to again think about what is required and for whom. And what do people need to know, not just about the digital literacy, but about the assessment? And I think it's that intersection where um, it's really worth thinking about. You know, sometimes people think these really lovely innovative assignments like doing wikis or video, and they just don't think about what the skills base needs to be from the perspective of the students and also with respect to the assessment because sometimes those things are not quite the same. And it's, it's like writing, everyone can write, but not everyone can write an essay. We know that those are different tasks. Yeah. Uh, one of the dilemmas you mentioned earlier was diversity. And we mm. know that, um, like the book points out, is um, the invisible barrier. Yeah. <laughs> so what are some considerations regarding this uh, invisible barriers to diversity, especially while we're discussing technology uh, mediated assessment? I think the thing about invisible barriers, which is, you know, good to do the, the, the air quotes, <laughs> is because they are um, invisible. We don't know what they are. Like when we know about them, then we can actually turn our minds to address them. But the most pernicious ones are the ones that just um, are overlooked. And, and so that's why I think one of the key ideas from my perspective in considering this is to think about processes to help support identification of, of what is holding people back in diversity. And that means process-based considerations. It means inviting lay people to look at your assessments and getting comment on them, um, um, to consider how particular forms of technology might preclude particular people. I, I've spoken to, you know, students on many an occasion who see things like very fancy sort of systems and gone, well, you know, I live in a rural location where my bandwidth is simply insufficient for me to access all of that. So suddenly this this great possibility is really, really is not going to be equitable for everyone and, and it needs to be rethought. So processes to bring people into the conversation and constant conversations are necessary because things change all the time and when we just when we think we've you know gotten really diverse suddenly we, we look over there and go well there's a whole you know group of people who, are, yeah, who don't have access yeah yeah true uh, i remember back uh working at the trip it was it felt like you had just climb the mountain and solve the problem and a new problem shows up like oh you know the <laughs> people that did this this so it, it, it is it is i really love the term invisible barrier so yeah thanks for sharing some um considerations there um now moving on to labor assessment labor what would you say are some practical considerations regarding assessment labor institutional policies and um digital technology uh digitally mediated assessment yeah, um, I think that's a really interesting point. So I think the thing about assessment labour is, I mean, as we talked about the notion of um, of who benefits from it. And the reality is, and I think in for today, you can think about who the stakeholders might be who might benefit. There's a student, they're benefiting. There might be well, on occasion, the lecturer might benefit, maybe the university or the course. If it's something like building a Wikipedia page, it could, it could be the community benefits or it could do harm to the community. Um, private companies benefit, um, they're private providers. So there's, there's these, these degree of benefits and possibilities of harms to stakeholders as well. So it's really important that these benefits be balanced you know um the institution shouldn't be getting all the benefit the private provider shouldn't be getting all the benefit the student must hold some benefit in the labor that they do that 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 seems only ethical and just so they do need to be balanced and i think the point for us when writing this book is that that's not an educator sitting 
designing an assessment, that's not their job to decide who benefits. It's a, it's, it's a tricky ethical problem. And the best way to deal with tricky ethical problems, actually, I think, is to deal with them systemically. So that means things like bringing in the institution, sets of ethical policies. I mean, there's a beautiful set, if, you, if for, for people who haven't read them, of, of um, ethical principles about the use of learning analytics or data analytics in higher, higher education. They're, they're wonderful and they lay out really clearly benefits and harms, and then these can get translated into balancing those things at local levels. But I think it's very, I think it's, we've talked about literacies, but I think it is, it is very difficult to sit there as a solo practitioner and go, I'm going to make this big, you know, moral judgment here when I might not be equipped to, to, to make those calls. It's all about the balance, finding the mm, balance. Mm, mm. I, I totally agree. Uh, as we think about digitally mediated assessments, and just this, this is a wrap up question, um, how do we make assessments work for learning? I think that's one of the things that we're finding challenging. I'm doing a piece of work at the moment around um, assessment um, in authentic environments and how if we start to see the digital as part of the authentic, and I've used that word before, socio-technical world in which we live, then it really does benefit learning because it's about preparing students for the, their futures which will be the world of work, a world of life, which is completely digitally mediated. And so our assessments should reflect their future worlds. Um, and if we think in those ways, if we think about how will our assessments help them navigate that future, then I think it's the way to bring in digital. So not how I can make my, not how I can make my assessment more innovative or more contemporary, all those romantic notions that we know, you know, I've done research that people have, oh, it's going to be cutting edge. It's no, but if, if we put front and centre of our minds, how can we prepare people for their digital futures? Then mm. I think um, our assessments will, will rise to the challenge. Wow. I'm very curious to hear how you go about um, uh, what the, pro um, the outcomes are for that research with regards to um, assessment in authentic environments. Yeah. Um, I know it's going to take a lot of um, design and collaboration with the industry to get that um, going. So once that's out, please, I would really love to read about that. <laughs> uh, it's a review. So we're reviewing other people's work. So we Good. will. Oh, yeah. So that should be, I, hopefully it will be, be in trade fairly soon. I'd like to say a big thank you to um, Professor Margaret of Deakin um, for sharing insights on digitally mediated assessments and what that looks like in how we um, support assessment enhancements. Thank you so much, Jane.